fed the burn units. And I'll show you a map here in a minute. Um, so, so the students got a lot of this information in the classroom, and then we're, we went out, and we're just going to show them, okay, here are the areas you can burn in. And then we came back in, and they started working on the plan. So here's, here's just a photo um, of the classroom. Doug's up there teaching a course, and you can see Quaker right there. Um, he's making sure everybody's staying awake. Um, okay, here's, here's the burn um, area, or the <coughs> unit that we can burn in. And so the students got this map, and um, they had to pick an area within that unit to develop their burn plan. So they had to set objectives and, and just all those components of the burn plan. So here we are out um, reconning the burn unit. Actually, we're not as an exercise, but I couldn't find a photo of it. But they're looking at the burn unit here. Okay, day two, um, uh, kind of loosely titled ignitions, but uh, the first discussion was on ignition techniques and. You know, one of the main things that we tried to emphasize here was um, not everything has to be ring fired in Iowa. And, um, you know, the, the resource objectives, your resources that you have available to you, and the safety are all going to help determine what ignition um, technique you use. We talked about ring fire, concentric fire, point source ignition, all those things, um, the benefits of them drawbacks to them. Um, and then uh, we even we touched a little bit on uh, things like Scott was talking about just a little bit ago, about how you can use different ignition techniques to manage smoke. Then we went into a presentation on Appendix B. Um, and I'm sure most of you are familiar with, with Appendix B, but um, you know you, you punch in some desired weather conditions. Um, some physical attributes of your property or your burn unit, you know, put them into the table and it spits out all these important things to you like flame length, uh, flame height, rate of spread, probability of, ign of ignition. And um, wanted to make sure that the students understood that this is a really good plan <coughs> when you're developing your burn plan. And then uh, we went into contingencies. Uh, this is something that I think a lot of us probably overlook in our plans. When things go south, how are we going to handle it? Um, and so we spent a lot of time on, on that, and it needs to be a part of, of your burn plan development. Like I said, you, know, you want to you size up your unit. Um, where are the places that you could really get in trouble? I mean, are, are there access issues? Um, are there wet spots where you could get um, equipment stuck. I mean, I know a guy in the back of the room that got his ATV stuck in seven to ten inches of water. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, it ended up being deeper than that, I guess. Um, so, contingency, we spent a lot of time on that. Well, after those three presentations, the squads got back together and revised their plans, and there were some pretty heavy revisions on those plans, which, which was a good thing. And, and then we had the squads get up and present um, their plans to the class. Um, <coughs> and at the end of the day, we went out and did some field exercises with, with equipment and ignition devices and suppression um, tactics. So, so here we are in the classroom again, revising bird plans. Um, and you can see Dennis there in the background. He's um, you know, he's kind of watching over and, and coaching um, the students through that plan. Um, I think that's Derek actually presenting his squad's plan um, to the class. And, and uh, Chad Gravy's right there in the front uh, closely critiquing them. And then here's just at the end of the day, we're out um, talking about equipment and uh, suppression activities. Okay, day three, the big day. This one we're going to put fire on the ground. Um, started out with a presentation by Doug on uh, managing the burn. So talked about everything from you know, once you show up on the site to do the burn, what are the things you need to do? What are the things you need to cover? Um, you know, briefing, 
LCES, um, you know, operation or order of operations, communications, MAPA, uh, all those things. And then we're ready to go out in the field and do fire. And this is what happened. Um, where's Rob Allen? Um, there he is. He's hiding his head. Rob, um, his squad hates cedar trees. And so this was his prescription was to light them all up. Um, actually, Rob likes cedar trees. And I'm sure he's mad to see this photo. And because he likes cedar trees, we're going to require that he go through the academy again because he obviously didn't learn anything. But um, now, as, as Joe mentioned earlier, um, our weather um, conditions made us fall outside of prescription. We were not able to put fire on the ground, unfortunately. But, you know, as, as Dennis says, we improvised, adapt, and overcame. Is that right? Okay, so that's, that's what we did. We came up with some alternative exercises uh, for the students. Uh, we did some um, mock ignition um, sequences. Um, we, we, we found this great place at Camp Dodge. It's just like a 20-acre parking lot or something. And, and we were able to um, let the students use different ignition devices, fuses, berry pistols, um, fire quit flare launchers. Um, so we were able to have, have some fun out there. Um, we did a, uh, um, a spot fire um, uh, exercise where we went out and stuck a, a flag in the, in the middle of this uh, uh, native grass field and gave the students some weather parameters and a timeline and said, use Appendix B to figure out how fast this, this fire is going to spread and then mark out with flags what that uh, spot fire is going to turn into in a given amount of time. And so that, that actually was a pretty good exercise. So um, we're, we were able to provide some pretty educational things even though we weren't able to put fire on the ground. So I think these are, are some of the big questions that a lot of people probably have about the Prescribed Fire Academy in Iowa. Is, you know, was it worth it? Was it worth it to take three days off work, to come down to Des Moines, stay overnight, and, and go to this academy? And was it really relevant to Iowa, or was it just all about Western wildfire? So to help answer some of those questions, I'm going to call on a few people to come up and, and kind of share their experiences. The first one, I want Joe Quaker to come back up and, and kind of talk about its, its relevance to <coughs> Iowa. IRBM roadside issues. 22 years I've worked for the same organization, so I really haven't moved around to do a lot of prescribed fire. I had the opportunity. I worked with the DNR, uh, you know, in the Colo Bog area. They come over and <clears throat> we work together, but you know, it's been a while back. The you know the roadside gig uh, through the Litter Roadway Trust Fund, we were able to probably be some of the first folks out there to uh, do S-130 and S-190 classes above that, you know, ap after that, and, um, <clears throat> as far as, you know, the county conservation level. So we, we started there, we kind of hit some roadblocks as far as roads. I mean, there is another roadside guy here, Dan, you can raise your hand and see. So we're kind of represented, <clears throat> represented, but not really that thorough. Um, and I think Joe in Story County, you know, I bring some of this information back and we'd be like, hey, you know, maybe some of the rest of the employees need to do S-130 and S-190. We're talking 15 years ago. So we started getting on board. And um, again, through uh, the RC and D, I I do believe in, is it Two Rivers? What, what's our? Three Rivers. There you go. Um, back. Oh, it's been a while, but we met at a meeting house. A lot of you in this room, I think there's a couple dozen of us, met below Sailorville in their little meeting house, and we tried to come up with some standards uh, on, you know, and, and roadside guys were there as part of the group to try to get together and figure out what we could do in Iowa to be uh, 
to put more fire on the ground safely. And then I 